In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Python tree sample with the FlowGraph Engine API step by step, taking you all the way through until you get to the final scene. This sample uses the FlowGraph Engine API to run this Bifrost graph and produce a USD file of a thousand random trees, all done outside Maya using just command line commands. This video takes you through the process in Windows, but you can do something similar with Linux or Mac OS Terminal. The first thing you want to do is check to see if Python is installed on your system. To do that, you'll go to the command prompt, type in Python. If you get something like this, then Python is installed. If it says it doesn't know what you're talking about, then you don't have Python. After this, you can just type in exit and it will exit Python. You also want to make sure you have pip installed, P-I-P. Pip is a utility that comes with later versions of Python, and you'll be needing it to run the tree sample. If you type in pip and you get something that looks like this, then Python and pip are installed and ready to run on your system. But if they're not, you'll need to install them. Go to python.org, go to Downloads, and choose your operating system. I prefer the zip install, but you can use whichever installer you prefer. This latest version of Python will also include pip, so after installation, you'll be good to go. The installation process will set it up so you can run Python from any folder on your machine. The next step is to go to GitHub and go to the URL shown here so that you'll be able to access the sample. Next, you'll want to create a folder for your tree sample. Just put it somewhere where you'll be able to find it easily. Now we can go back to GitHub and download the Python tree sample to that folder. And then navigate to the folder and unzip the file. I'm going to rename these two folders to something shorter to make navigation easier. Now that we've got that all ready, we're going to create an Autodesk app. To sign up for an app, navigate to aps.autodesk.com. That's Autodesk Platform Services. You'll need to sign into your Autodesk account in order to create an app. If you don't have an account, you can create one here. Once you sign in, you can click to go to My Apps, and if you don't have any application set up, you'll be invited to create a new one. So let's create an application for this particular sample that we're going to do. Let's type in a name. This name is mostly for later when you come back to all your apps and you're wondering which one is for which. Now for the tree sample, we want to create a server to server app. If you're curious about the different options and why you might want to use one or the other, you can check out the documentation for more information. Once you click create, you'll be presented with a client ID and a client secret. These are your credentials for running services in the cloud. You'll be able to see the client secret if you click the little eyeball. I'm not going to show you my client secret, which brings me to the point that you really need to keep your client secret a secret. These are the credentials that are going to be used to run the tree sample in the cloud and your credentials are also what Autodesk uses to keep track of who's doing what up in the cloud. So this ID and secret are uniquely connected to you. If someone else gets your ID and secret, they can start running jobs in the cloud and making it look like you're overdoing it up there. So keep it a secret. Going back to the GitHub sample. You can see here, it tells you to set up your client ID and secret as environment variables. You could do this a couple of different ways. You can simply go to the command prompt and type it in. But a better way to go about it is to create a batch file and run that every time we want to use our app. I'm going to create this batch file using Notepad. And now we're going to save this as a batch file in the same folder as the Python script FGE add trees. And we'll call it set environment variables.bat. Now let's head over to our folder and make sure that the extension on this is a batch file. If not, if it's forced to be a TXT file, you can just change the extension to bat. Now all you have to do is run this batch file every time you want to set your client ID and secret with your app. 
Now we're ready to run some commands and get the FlowGraph Engine API working with the tree sample. First, let's go back to GitHub and take a look at these instructions here. We've got a few things we have to do before we can run the tree sample, and they're all going to be done from the command prompt. So let's go ahead and navigate to the folder where we've got all our files, the batch file, the Python script, the requirements text file, and in the address bar, type in CMD. This will open the command prompt window right into that folder. This is particularly handy when your folder names are long and complicated, so you don't have to navigate around through the command prompt. Next, we'll run the pip command to install the requirements text file. On GitHub, the command is given right here. Copy and paste this command into the command prompt window and press enter to install the requirements. Next, we'll set the environment variables using the batch file. Now we're ready for the big moment. On GitHub, we see the Python command right here. Copy and paste that into the command prompt and away we go. You can see that the script is sending the job up to the cloud, running it, and then returning the output. If the Python script fails, it could be for different reasons. I'll talk about those in a minute. But if it runs correctly, you will see this new USD file in the output folder. This is the USD file containing a thousand randomly placed trees, which you can see if you import the file into a 3D program like Maya or 3ds Max. If you try to run the Python script and you get an error message, it could be for a couple of reasons. One is that you need to set your credentials in the same command prompt session as the one where you run the Python script. If you close the command prompt in between the two, the system will discard the environment variable settings and the API won't be able to find them, which means you won't have any credentials to run the job in the cloud. There are ways to set the environment variables in a way that makes them stick, but the workflow I'm describing here is designed to only expose your client ID and secret when you need them. For example, you could, theoretically, put your client ID and secret hard-coded right here in the Python script. But if you accidentally share this file, then everyone would have your ID and secret. And that would not be a good thing. If you set your credentials with the batch file in the same terminal session as the one where you install the requirements and run the Python script, everything should work fine, and your client ID and client secret will continue to be safe. Another reason the script might fail is if you don't install the requirements before running the Python script. So make sure you run everything in this sequence. Open the command prompt, install the requirements, set the environment variables, and then run the Python script. If you do all these things in the right sequence, you should end up with a USD file in your output folder that contains 1,000 randomly scattered trees. If you'd like to learn how to use the FlowGraph Engine API with any Bifrost graph, go ahead to the next video to find out how.